Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Time for another 5-Minute Friday. For those of you returning, welcome back. And for those that are new, welcome. 5-Minute uh, Fridays, we try to keep the videos to 5 minutes, which if you've watched any other videos, you know is extremely difficult for me because I could describe the numbers in my phone number for 5 minutes. But anyway, uh, this is where I answer questions for, uh, that come in, uh, either in the comments below in the YouTube videos or more often than not by email. And so we'll jump right in and try to keep it to 5 minutes. So, question number 1. When are things going to get back to normal in your opinion? What I've heard from everyone is not to expect to travel back to the U.S. Uh, until April 2021. The catch for Canadians and other people, I think, is you can't get travel insurance uh, that covers COVID. Um, I, I don't think for the foreseeable future. I have travel insurance until the end of September, but after that, I wouldn't be able to travel. So anything COVID related would come out of my own pocket. And we've all heard stories about the costs of healthcare in other countries. So. I think I probably won't get back into the U.S. until middle to late 2021. I think it's going to take between three and five years for the economy to recover to where it was before. I don't think we've seen the full damage yet. I think there's going to be a liquidity crisis to follow this. And then a debt crisis. Those that have done the work are going to make a disgusting amount of money. Those that haven't... Uh, are probably going to get bowled over and so the sooner you can sort out this new economy the better number two what's the best thing to come out of the pandemic i think the best thing um for us and what we've seen uh, with our clients is innovation a lot of us were enjoying the models we were in you know they made a lot of money uh you did well with a correction like this you often have to innovate change adjust right the the, the saying that i love is the big take from the small but the fast take from the big for those people and companies that got on board within the first 30 days to adjust their model are doing very well. Those that are thinking they're going to wait it out till the fall or the end of the year, uh, it's not going to work out well for them. So this has forced innovation even within GoCO and we're coming out stronger than we went in. So it's um, an unexpected and positive byproduct. Number three, is there money to be made in the downturn? There is. There is going to be less competition on the other side of this and for people that uh, adjust their, you know, adjust their sales into the wind and jump on the vomit comet and get in it, stay in it safely, uh, they're gonna have an enormous amount of market share that they wouldn't have had before. Things were pretty balanced and competitive back in the day, but I would guess, and totally not an economist or a mathematician, between 30 to 40% of your competition will no longer exist by the time this is done, again, in, in three to five years. So you, if you're working hard, can grab all of that market share and, and come out the other side. Plus, going back to the original point with innovation, uh, you're gonna come out as a stronger company. So that'll be a barrier to entry for competitors looking to come and eat your lunch. The old saying, right? Eat lunch or be lunch. Number four, are more people moving towards business coaching or quitting business coaching? Down markets are great for business coaches. Uh, the benefit we have is we always had a strong pipeline of prospects and a limited amount of coaches. So there was always, you know, between three to 10 prospective clients for every active client spot. So we have more and more clients coming in that were sitting on the fence. Um, we, all of our clients are doing extremely well. Uh, the mental game has been more challenging than the business model. And because our clients are always in a constant state of building business, they had a, a strong pipeline. So even if they lost clients, they normally had replacements. The odd one uh, would see a big contract disappear. That even happened for us. And you know, you quickly move to replace and again, going back to the original points about innovation and so on. If you're, you know, if your feet are moving, you're gonna be fine. And so we, you know, a market like this, just like in 08, 09, even in 2010, these are great for us, not not great for the health side of, of mankind, but from a business coaching perspective, if you have your shit together, this is, I mean, we hit our revenue target June 23rd for the year, if that's any indication. And the last question, trying to come in, uh, why do you and Dan give each other gears in your videos? So I'll put a link to our recent video up here. Dan and I have done business together for 10 years. We have become very good friends over that time. And guys, 
for the for the women watching guys tend to give huge gears uh, in public and privately defend each other where sometimes uh, what I've heard from some of my female colleagues is it is the opposite is women can be really nice in public but maybe a little meaner behind uh, closed doors and so I don't know if that's true because I'm not a woman behind those closed doors but uh, for most guys, if you're not teasing each other, you probably don't like each other. And so that's why. And I should add that in the videos for on good behavior, we are much meaner to each other uh, when no one's around. And you might see that in some upcoming videos. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Open up to any comments or follow-up questions you have either in the below or you can hit me at chris at goseo.com. Stay safe, get after it, and remember gladiators eat first, so jump in the market and, and innovate. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.